Review program hosted by a puppet. In this special episode, we'll be looking at some of the entertainments from 2010 that the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences would do well to avoid. And rather than pick on the mediocre ones that, you know, aren't even a part of the conversation, we're going to concentrate on the films that really have a shot at being nominated. Because this isn't a mean spirited show, and I don't think I have to tell anyone not to get cop out an Oscar. First up is a performance that could easily be recognized in the category of Best Supporting Actor. But probably shouldn't. What can we do for you, sir? I'm after a funeral. Boy, are you in luck. Solid pecan. Steel handles. Whatever you want. Party. A what? A funeral party. Get Low is a small but worthwhile release about an old hermit skillfully portrayed by Robert Duvall. Duvall's performance has generated some buzz, and that's well deserved. But there's also been some buzz for Bill Murray, who plays a supporting role as a funeral director. The performance was naturally good, but does Bill Murray really deserve an Oscar for it? This nomination will be typical of an Academy Awards practice of rewarding what just happens to be the latest effort in a wrongfully overlooked career. Alan Arkin didn't win for Little Miss Sunshine. Judy Dench didn't win for Shakespeare in Love. Whoopi Goldberg didn't win for Ghost. These were apology Oscars, and if Bill Murray gets nominated, it's not going to be for Get Low. It's going to be for Caddyshack, Stripes, Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horror, Scrooge, Quick Change, What About Bob, Groundhog Day, Kingpin, Space Jam, Wild Things, Rushmore, Lost in Translation, and Get Low. And I think that's against the rules. Next, let's take a look at an action fantasy that's on the short list to steal the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Release the Kraken! Clash of the Titans is a fun popcorn movie, which means you eat popcorn when you watch it. This is a term of derision indicating that the film is unchallenging to your viewing sensibilities. I don't really make the distinction because I like popcorn with every movie. In this case, the movie's primary value is that it transports you to a fantasy land filled with monsters, and then Sam Worthington fights them. But they just use computers for everything. The original Clash of the Titans in 1981 was done with stop-motion puppetry by animation legend Ray Harryhausen. I understand not using puppets for something like Tron Legacy. That movie actually takes place in a computer, so I get that. But no puppets at all? In a remake of a Ray Harryhausen movie? They didn't even use the owl robot. And they had it because Sam Worthington throws it in the trash. <sighs> When we come back, we'll look at two more to forget, including my pick for this year's Adequate Ensemble. Tonight, we attack. Welcome to the Resistance. I didn't know we could do that. Welcome back to Puppet and the Movies. Shrek Forever After is the fourth film in the Shrek series. It's not bad. I liked it. But look, three movies are going to get nominated for Best Animated Feature. Two of them are going to be Toy Story 3 and How to Train Your Dragon. And one of those is going to win. So the third nominee is going to be just that. The third nominee. Might as well give it to a movie that isn't already a household name. Five of the top ten highest grossing films of 2010 were animated, and Shrek Forever After was one of them. DreamWorks doesn't need that second nomination. Instead, Academy voters should watch some of the lesser-known animated films of the year. And I'm not talking about the Owls of Gahul! Well, I mean, maybe you liked it. I don't... Just watch them all and make your vote count. Don't vote for Shrek just because it's a familiar name. And that might seem like an offensively obvious request, but if people didn't lend blind support to familiar names despite an overwhelming lack of quality, The Simpsons would have stopped winning Emmys over 10 years ago. Next, let's take a look at my pick for this year's Adequate Ensemble. This is meant to highlight a film that I think is extraordinary, but whose ensemble cast is merely adequate. 
People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends, pictures, profiles? I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. There's been lots of chirping lately about the social network and all the nominations it's gonna get. Everybody's saying how Jesse Eisenberg and his friends are really clutch and butter and all this stuff. But that's the thing. Of course these performances were good. They were being scripted by Aaron Sorkin and directed by David Fincher. But did any of them really amaze you? Or were they simply solid displays of capable talent in a high-profile picture? This is another typical Academy habit of just picking your favorite movie and voting for everything about it, even though there may be other candidates that deserve the specific awards more. You know what's an Oscar-worthy performance? Jim Varney in Ernest Goes to Jail. The man plays dual roles as different as night and day in what I can barely refer to as a movie, and his character work is sublime. He even slips into sub-characters whenever Ernest is doing shtick. You think anyone nominated him that year? I'm not saying he was conclusively better than Jeremy Irons in Reversal of Fortune, but he definitely should have been on the ballot. Look, the social network was sick. I hope it gets nominations galore. Just not at the expense of someone better. Great actors do non-prestige movies, too. That's it for this week on Puppet and the Movies. And before we go, I'd like to also add that I don't think James Franco should be recognized at all this year, because he's hosting the ceremony, and if he's nominated for Best Actor, he's just going to give it to himself and not show anyone the envelope. And that's a shame because he was really good in 127 Hours. Maybe next year they should get a host who doesn't have a conflict of interest. I would suggest Kermit the Frog, but there's a new Muppet movie coming out, and I expect a full award sweep! Until next time, the Puppet Theater is closed.